Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. So today, just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at an interesting article piece about how this is a golden opportunity. Me personally, I think it's a little bit of hopium, but uh, let's just dive right in and just get into it, shall we? So this was from Forbes. It actually had a, a pretty good premise. It talks about how there's a golden opportunity. Bitcoin and crypto are suddenly braced for a critical Fed price earthquake. I got to tell you, this is a, it's an embellishment to say the least. But I mean, if we take a look at it, it actually has some, some good points to take into account. So here's what we got. Uh, Bitcoin and crypto traders are braced for Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to signal the Fed will start cutting U.S. interest rates in September, described as a golden opportunity to seize a narrative. And when I think about this, I think, you know, as far as like cutting rates, I always think about the next FOMC or the uh, Fed meeting, which will take place next month. I want to say September 18th, correct me in the comment section. But I didn't consider this little piece right here, which is in Jackson Hole. And on Thursday, yes, this Thursday, the Jackson Hole Economic Policy Symposium Annual Retreat for Central Bankers begins in Wyoming. Fed Chair's uh, Powell, or Jerome Powell's keynote speech on Friday is expected to give markets either the thumbs up or the thumbs down to an interest rate cut in September. So essentially what they're saying is he's going to take the stage on Friday. Whatever he says there, people are going to pay uh, massive attention to it. And we're going to find out exactly like, not if he's going to cut rates. I think he's going to cut rates, but I mean, he might not. I guess that'd be the reason for it to really pay attention. But there may be clues as to one cut rate of 25 basis points or maybe even 50 basis points. And if that's the case, we don't have to wait until the 18th of September. And there's going to be a little bit of a, of a rally uh, from, of course, August into that, which would be is roughly about a month away. So I thought about this. I go, yeah, it's a pretty good idea to share this with people and go from there. Goldman Sachs economists have said they are increasingly confident the Fed will cut rates by a quarter, what I mean since September, but said that another downside job surprise on September 6th could trigger 50 basis points. So I guess this all depends on what Jerome says on Friday, what our jobs report comes out on September 6th. But I will say that initial claims uh, has increased a little bit. And usually when you have initial claims for unemployment, that means that there is an unemployment rate uh, increase on the horizon. Now, does that mean it's going to come on September 6th? I have no idea. That's why we have to wait for it. But if we do get a 50 basis point cut, the time to buy, and this is not financial advice, but in my mind, the time to buy was yesterday. Or if you really want to split hairs, probably today. But then again, we could come back and Jerome Powell on Friday could say something like, you know what, data's come out and we don't really see it. And, you know, we're not going to talk about uh, rate cuts because we are data dependent. But the economy is strong. If you start hearing words like the economy is strong, the unemployment rate or employment rate is steady. That'll give you an indication. But if we take a look at the Fed tool, we can see that as far as the geniuses that are out there that say that, yes, the current target rate, the current rate right now is 525 to 550. They're saying there's a almost 80% chance it'll be cut by a quarter or 25 basis points. And there's a about a one in five chance that it could cut down 50 basis points. But let me just think about that in the comment section. Again, I want to bring this to everybody's attention because it's something I didn't even think about. You know, there's the symposium on Friday. So maybe from between now and then, you might be saying to yourself, hey, why is the market fluctuating so much? Or why is it going up so much? Again, we'll never really know. That's why a dollar cost average, but just let you understand. I lay it out so you can play it out. Anyhow, that's what we have for that piece. And then also, this is a good post that, I, I think we we get a little bit too ahead of ourselves. Maybe we get a little bit too negative. But as from Genevieve roach Dector, chief financial analyst, and she talks about, and it's a good point, she said, let's celebrate Jerome Powell today. And trust me, this account, I've been following this for a couple of years now. Uh, she's not like a, you know, a Fed rah-rah individual. Uh, but what she says is there's something to be said. He has managed to get stocks to record high, true. Gold to record high. I mean, I think we just cut, crossed 2,500 uh, a couple of days ago. So, you know, congratulations, all the gold bugs. Uh, Bitcoin to a record high. Remember, we were at 73K not too long ago, meaning that he didn't crash the economy because the inflation is coming down and the economy is humming along. Now, of course, there's going to be a discrepancy like that's BS because 
my rates go down and everything else is going up and inflation, look, inflation's still there. It's still above the target rate of 2%. Yes, it still sucks, but it hasn't automatically collapsed like a lot of people said it would. Can he come down to the soft landing? It's anybody's guess, but I mean, so far, not too bad. We'll see if he can stick that landing, but <laughs> good luck with that. I just wanted to kind of bring it to everybody's attention and say, hey, maybe things aren't as bad as we think they are, especially for Bitcoin. And take a look at this. This is from uh, Vic Sharma. He says, or they actually received me from Bitcoin Magazine. I want to talk about the uh, dichotomy of opinions here. Bitcoin Magazine states that 75% of Bitcoin has not moved in the past six months. That's very bullish. How are you maybe saying to yourself, but Rob, why the hell is uh, the price going down so much? It's because the other 25% want to play around with your Bitcoin or they want to trade it or they want to go on leverage or they want to do some degen crazy stuff. And then, of course, what happens? You get cascading liquidations and robots that sell off. So that's where the problem is. I mean, not everybody's going to get on board with this initially. They're going to still want to play their little trad five games. And that's fine. In the long run, I've been here since 2017. It's worked out for me pretty darn well. It's just I had to stick around for it. But I like to see stories like this. Same price on Bitcoin is not moved. But then Vic, I think he's from Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet? Yeah, Cake Wallet founder. He says, why is this a good thing? People need to use Bitcoin. Vic's right in a, in a certain sense, but people aren't using Bitcoin like the old adage goes to buy coffee. They're not using Bitcoin to use it as a medium of exchange for the most part. There still are people that are out there. I mean, Lightning Network is doing pretty well. I think we need a layer two solution. We'll see if we get one. Core is in the top uh, 100, so maybe that's something to, to take into consideration. But remember, Bitcoin is not just one thing to everybody. It has multiple purposes. And that's why I think it's like the Swiss army knife of finance. I mean, you can just keep it as a store of value. You can use it as a medium of exchange. You can use it as a hedge against inflation if you have a long enough time horizon. I understand people say, well, last week it didn't do so hot. That's true. But over the last 11, 12, 13 years or so, yeah, I want to make sure the math is right. Uh, we can see that before, the, the average median house cost was around $200,000. This was in 2010, maybe 220, 223. It cost, it, it was hundreds and hundreds, actually, excuse me, thousands of Bitcoin to buy that house. That same house today is worth double, $430,000. And guess how much Bitcoin you have to use for that? About seven. So I still see it as a hedge against inflation. I still say it can be a new exchange. I still say it can do a lot of different things and people don't have to use it. Again, it's the Swiss Army knife of finance. But uh, I like to see these types of things. And also, people will say, but Rob, actually, they'll say a lot of things, but they'll say, look, Bitcoin's awful because it uses so much electricity for miners. Are you concerned about that? Sure, why not? But you have to understand, you can do whatever you want with it. But there's also something that El Salvador is doing. Check this out. El Salvador mined 474 Bitcoin worth about, oh, about 30 million or so, 29 million using volcano-fueled geothermal power. Now, that's a renewable resource. I like to see that. Why can't we do more of that? Why can't we use solar? Why can't we use wind more? And of course, I've done a couple of presentations on why that it's not such a big deal for these because we can use these renewable resources and it can actually work out. It's just that the people that actually hate Bitcoin say, no, 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 you have to do what we want you to do with it. The hell with you, I can do whatever I want. And if I want to mine Bitcoin, there's, there it is. Eh, here in the great state of Texas, where I'm currently vacationing, when we have an issue with the power grid, we just tell the Bitcoin miners to shut down. And guess what? We pay them to do that. They do it. And then when we have excess energy, fire everything up. It works out great. I don't know why the states can't get them under, un, to understand that. But this is what we have. Congratulations, El Salvador. I like to see that. Um, that's the positive. So... Before we go on, I should have said, I should have prefaced it with this. I like to give you positive news, but I cannot be here for your uh, copium shill. I have to give you balance. And I have to have you understand that uh, finance and uh, investing is uh, dangerous and tricky and all that great stuff. That's why they have the rules. So let's talk about politics. Not politics, just what the politicians are doing in Bitcoin. This was a report from Bitcoin Magazine. This has been making the rounds across X right now. Democratic Party released its official platform with no mention of Bitcoin or crypto. 
Now, I know that there's been an outreach program for the Kamala Harris and her political aspirations to become the president. Great. She makes it fantastic. Whatever. But I'm just telling you right now, if there is a positive story, please tell me so I can talk about it here. But so far, the things that I see are not very positive from the Democratic Party. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. But the official platform was pretty extensive. Let me see. If we just kind of scroll over here, they talk about the important stuff, right? Growing our economy, economic progress, jobs, small businesses, lowering costs, taxes, tackling the climate crisis. Sure. Protecting communities and tackling the scourge of gun violence. Should probably just give more people guns. Strengthen democracy. And advance the presidency change. So, but as you can scroll through that, you can see that there's not any mention whatsoever of Bitcoin and crypto. So we'll see if they, she comes out at some point and you know makes an official stance. I don't care about what her, her staff says. I don't care about what her handlers say. I want to hear it from her. That would be great. Then we can kind of know where we we're going. If she comes out and says, I'm pro Bitcoin, I want to make it a reserve strategy. I want to you know, put it on the balance sheet. I want to do all these great things. I'll be the first one to report it. But so far, I haven't gotten that. And uh, I'm just trying to stay balanced. But I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that in this particular issue, not looking good for us on, the, on this side. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments because I'm sure you will. <laughs> and then lastly, I have a question for everybody. I need help sometimes. And this is about Render, uh, the Render project, which I personally have. And I think it's a great project. AI, deep in play. And it was a question that came through me uh, via email. And I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention just so they know and just so we could kind of rectify this. It says, hey, Rob, hope all is well with you and your family. Sorry to bother you instead of a trivial type of issue. It's not trivial. But I was hoping maybe you can help me understand a small issue on Coinbase. I, and of course, this is only for Coinbase if you have it on a centralized exchange. If you have it in your cold storage wallet or even your hot wallet, you don't have to worry about this. Well, there's caveats. I have some of the old render ERC20 tokens that I'm trying to swap to the new Solana token. I had forgotten about this. Solana had gone from ERC20 tokens to Solana, probably because it's faster and cheaper and easier, and it just doesn't work for them. I think there's different chains for different purposes, and this doesn't serve their purpose, so they're going to go, they're going to leave. Don't crucify them. Just like, hey, this other, this other project does better. That's all it is. Everything that Coinbase advertised as a token is a one-to-one -one value, 100 render for 100 render. The problem I'm encountering is when I go to do the conversion, I'm losing 200 tokens in the swap. First of all, I don't know how much. The, the token's worth four bucks? That's a lot of money. That doesn't make much sense. Uh, anyhow. I'm using 200 tokens of to the swap. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. I don't understand something. It's also around 240 for slippage. <laughs> that's a lot, but that's big of a deal. Just the cost of doing business. Um, but taking 200 tokens of to swap for one to one doesn't seem legit. And there's a lot of, <laughs> Sue says that sounds ridiculous. Uh, a lot of people had uh, commented on what you can actually do. And I'm just going to show this to everybody. This is from uh, the official network, rendernetwork.com. And it talks about the Solana Upgrade Assistance Tool. I linked this in the description and it shows you how to do this step by step. But there's also some good alpha in here uh, about how you can do it by uh, saving yourself a bunch of costs. So I'm not down there, or up here. So I linked this comment uh, from X in the description. If you need this information, it's there for you. Uh, but that's it for today. So I just want to bring it to everybody's attention like a little PSA uh, because. I'm concerned. I want everybody to not get screwed over. That's it. So look, everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is uh, time sensitive. Now, if you want to do a little Q&A, try to answer all your questions to the best of my abilities. This is probably my favorite part of the show. And uh, we'll get out of here. But if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you very much.